We started feeding our bees about three weeks ago, and this is because they're coming out of winter and they have no nectar source out, but they're flying and foraging and, you know, trying to forage, at least searching for forage. And it's kind of like going to the gym, working out, but not actually eating anything afterwards or for the next week. Uh, you have like food rations that are in the, the hive, but they're dwindling because it's been winter and even here in North Carolina, they, they still can go out and fly a little bit and come back. So they're expending energy. And what we're trying to do is refill their energy or at least sustain their energy by feeding them some sugar syrup. We're not feeding a ton. We're not going out there all the time and refilling, but what we, uh, are doing is trying to keep them alive, keep them happy, and then once the nectar flow starts, they can start really hitting it hard. When we check our hives, we want to make sure that it's a warm enough temperature outside so we don't have to worry about any kind of chilled brood or any other problems like that. And we, the, the bees have a nice heat envelope inside their hive. We don't want to ruin that, so even when we do take the outer cover off, we don't do it for very long unless it's on a very warm day. So on the days that we are opening our hives and we're going to be in there for a little bit longer, even if we're not pulling frames out, we want to make sure it's around 60 degrees. And while we feed right now uh, before the flow really hits hard, it's not going to be perfect for everyone. Uh, we have a, a beekeeper friend up in Canada, Tall Cedars, and she's probably not going to be able to feed right now because it's, it's probably still too cold. Uh, you don't want to feed when the temperatures are getting below freezing. You don't want the sugar syrup to freeze, and you especially don't want it to freeze and then warm up and then drip all over your bees. We check each of the supers every Monday, if we can, every Monday, because what we want to make sure is that as they're drawing out comb, that it's nice and straight with the frame and it's not getting wonky. Now, if it starts to get wonky, you can go ahead and fix it before it just gets too bad. If you wait three, four weeks and they're just pulling out all this wax and then all of a sudden you got comb that's everywhere, like you've just wasted your, your super essentially because the frames aren't straight and you got to cut a lot of wax in order to make the frame straight. Now you can alleviate this with like plastic foundation or maybe using wax foundation, but we don't like the plastic because it doesn't give the bees that cavity to move around in, but it does give the beekeeper peace of mind for knowing that the bees have a guide to, to draw out their, their wax straight. We don't really need that. We'll just walk out there. We'll check. Uh, like last year, the bees started drawing out some of our shallows and the comb got a little wonky. Well, we can walk out there now because that comb is empty. It doesn't have any nectar or anything in it. And it's drier because there is nothing in it. The bees aren't up there. And so you can just use your hands and push it to where you kind of want the wax. And it'll move. It'll move right there. You can just kind of crush it a little bit with your hands. The bees will come back later and open the cells back up and the comb will be nice and straight. And you also want to make sure that you're fixing mistakes quickly because the longer you let it get out of control, the more comb you're going to have to cut to fix those mistakes. And that's just more work for the bees, which is less honey for you and for them. As a beekeeper, we want to make sure that our frames are nice and flush together. And if they are not, because we got a little rushed in our in our inspections and putting it back together or whatever. Uh, those Hoffman self-spacing sidebars will leave a little gap and the bees will propolize it. And we want to make sure that we scrape off that excess propolis now in the spring and, and make sure those frames are nice and flush together so that when the bees are filling it and, and maybe drawing out more comb or not, that the, the frames are evenly spaced apart which means that the comb will be evenly spaced apart and it won't be really far out on this one and, and not so much on this one at all. It makes it easier to do inspections for one and it also makes it easier to do harvesting. We feed all of our hives 
inside them instead of exterior. And that's to reduce the chances of rotting. We will flip the, the jars of syrup upside down behind the hives, not in front of them. And that helps to reduce robbing as well. It's almost like there's nectar on the flowers just behind the hive, like there is all over the rest of the yard. So that just helps reduce it a little bit more. And if we're feeding all of the hives at the same time, which we do, then there's less chance of bees really trying to go find it somewhere else because they have it there already. So the inner covers, when we were taking them off, I did notice that there was a bunch of moisture. But at the same time, the, the moisture is on the perimeter of the inner cover. If you look closely, you'll see that there's a nice dry, almost uh, elliptical in the middle of the, the inner cover. And what that does tell you is that the bees are centered in the middle of the hive and they're creating heat and the heat's pushing up and keeping the center nice and dry so nothing's dripping down on them and pushing that moisture off to the side. Now this could have been just because we had a lot of rain or it could have been the fact that we're feeding sugar because the more water you introduce to the hive, the more moisture is going to be in the hive. The traps in the war a we left in over winter and you can a trap can only take so many beetles so with the oil level that we had in there hive beetles were dying in it and just stacking up and at at that point beetles were getting in and they were able to climb back out because they weren't you know drowning in the the oil because the oil was full of hive beetles they could basically walk on the island essentially the the traps totally worked one of the, the the mistakes I made and coming into spring you always got to remember like hey you got to knock off the rust whenever you're getting into a hive and that was I should have ran my hive tool along the face of the beetle blaster and that would have crushed all of those beetles in one swoop and then when I pulled up the beetle blaster we would have seen a ton of dead dead beetles that were crushed there and then the bees would have just taken them out and discarded them but that was a mistake seeing all those beetles is a concern because where are they coming from when you look at the wax there's not a whole bunch of beetle larvae in there that means that they're left over from fall and if that's the case then we're gonna have a a bigger hive beetle problem this year than we did last year or the year before. And we have a couple of different types of, of feeding lids, the, the lids that we put on our mason jars to feed the sugar syrup. Uh, the typical ones that we have are just metal standard mason jar lids and we, we poke a couple holes in the top with some small nails, very small nails. And when you invert it, it forms a vacuum and then the, the bees will be able to put their proboscis up in that hole and, and drink that syrup out of there. Uh, we did find some bee jar lids on Etsy and super excited about them. I was like, oh my goodness, we don't have to worry about the bees with the propolis and it's sticking in the, in the hole in the inner cover anymore. Well, they actually worked really well for that purpose. However, the way that they're manufactured, they have a bunch of uh, space underneath where the, the bees are that's not used for the syrup, but is a perfect hiding space for some small hive beetles. So we're going to have to work that out and figure out what's the best option there. If we don't have small hive beetles in the hive, then it's not really an option. But because we are kind of battling some of those in, in a few of the hives right now, we're going to have to... We, we did switch those out for the standard metal mason jar lids right now, but we want to come up with a better solution so we're not wasting those because they do work great. We've done extensive research on different types of beekeeping techniques and throughout the country and even the world for some, some parts. And we try and take little bits and pieces from different places and incorporate them into our practice and how we do things. 
Uh, some of the things that we've heard about and have tried to incorporate in our apiary, like roughing up on the insides of hives to help promote propolis. Uh, this propolis envelope of the hive is, is natural in trees and such and, and wild bees, and it helps reduce viruses and bacteria within the colony. Uh, another thing that we read about or actually heard about at one of our beekeeping conferences was using burlap as an inner cover instead of a standard wooden inner cover. We tried it and, and it worked okay, but it, it kept sticking to all of the tops of the frames and we noticed when we were pulling it off, the bees were not too happy about that. So we were like, brilliant idea. We'll make a frame staple the burlap to that frame and then they'll have a top entrance and they'll have the burlap will be good. Well, we found out that because of that extra space at the top, the bees weren't really propolizing the burlap because it wasn't attached to the frames. And they actually chewed a hole in a couple of them. So it wasn't really working out the way that we hoped it would. We opened up our nucleus hive and we noticed that in the top brood box, the frames had fallen in. Well, no. that's kind of a problem. And we went ahead and took all those frames out to look at the box to find out, well, what happened. Turns out when I made the box, we just used brad nails, brad nails or staples essentially, and that the wood was warping. So the frame rests at the top started getting further and further apart from each other and that that's okay it's not great but we had an extra box we took that extra one replaced uh, or put it in the position of the other one and essentially replaced it we put all the frames in that box took the old box to the workshop clamped it real tight it snapped together you could hear the propolis, uh, propolis breaking and snapping together, and then I just screwed it so that next time we use it, we're good to go. Overall, coming out of winter, I think our hives looked pretty good. Uh, we still have a few concerns, uh, some small high beetle issues, and uh, a couple of the hives weren't quite as strong as we hoped that they would be coming out of winter. However, I think overall in the apiary, we're looking good going into spring. And those, those couple of hives that weren't doing quite so well, I think we can nurse them back to health. And, and maybe those couple we won't have to worry too much about swarming this year because the other hives are booming at this time of year. Um, we did see it peeking in uh, some brood, some capped brood already. So I think within the next couple of weeks, we're going to have an extreme expansion of population so I think we're going to have some serious swarming issues this season if we don't keep that under control, which we do plan on doing. That being said, everything working, working out in the apiary, uh, our bees are, are covering most of the frames. Everything looks happy. We got supers on. We're feeding to keep them alive a little bit longer so we don't have any starvation. When things don't go right in the apiary, I don't really react too well. I have that initial knee jerk, like, hey, this is a giant problem. Let me freak out for a second or two or 30 minutes. And then typically my wife will calm me down. I'll have a really good idea. Uh, I'll just get a drink because <laughs> he, here it gets so hot. You're sweating everywhere. And even during the spring, you're sweating. And the sweat continues from spring until fall. So, yeah, you, you're uncomfortable and it gets agitating. But the, the best thing for me to do is just stop. Close up the hive for a second or whatever I'm doing. Just close it up. That way the bees are protected. So take care of the bees. Step away. Don't dwell on the problem. Try and solve the problem. If, if anything, call a mentor or just talk to somebody else about what's going on. Maybe they'll have a good idea that will kind of lead you to the right solution. Um, the, 
taking that sort of time keeps you from making bigger mistakes because the first year or so we would make a mistake. I was still doing research. Lisa was still doing research and all of these ideas from podcasts or YouTube and everything was popping into our heads and it's like, let's do this. No, let's do this. Just take a second. What's best for the bees and try and calm down and just think what's best for the bees because healthy bees are happy bees. Enough. <laughs>